Well, you gotta love it. Dallas is experiencing some turmoil. And what the heck is going on with us on Reddick? Yet the Eagles are fine as Jalen Hurts is taking ownership. And why should we expect an incoming breakout from Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard? Plus, the birds may not be satisfied at backup receiver, but is this former number five overall pick really the answer? Let's talk about it. But first, let's run it. What's up, guys? Let me just start out by apologizing to those of you who got messages from someone posing as me. I cannot stress enough to beware and look out for the scammers these days. However, at least whoever Tyler David is has been reported and removed from the channel. Also, another reminder, I'm never going to ask you to pay for anything or request any other info other than shipping address so you can get the prize. Anyway, having said that, I'm very sorry, and hopefully it didn't impact any of you guys. Although speaking about prizes, if you didn't catch it on the Friday night live stream, Isaiah Rogers is going to be giving away his white Eagles helmet and autographing it once the Philly special show hits 75,000 subscribers. All right, let's do a giveaway. What do we, I, I know exactly what we can give away too, but. Okay. Keep that, keep it as a surprise, but you have an idea of it? Or should we say what no, it is right now? We, we, can give, we can give away the white helmet. No Nobody way. has the white helmet. Are you serious? You give away the yeah. white helmet? 75,000 subs and give away the white helmet. Oh my gosh. I might create with, with a burner account to win that thing, quite honestly, if you're going <laughs> to put that out there. Oh my we gosh. Know. I'll I'll sign it. I should sign it, and you should sign it. So I'll I mean, sign it, ship it to you. For real? Because because whoever whoever's the whoever's the the winner contribute into the seventy five. So that's I'll true. be lit. Oh my gosh, dude! If you so I'll I'll sign it, ship ship it to you, and then you can put it behind you or whatever you want to do with it, and then so whenever I whenever I ship out the jersey, I ship yours as well. Okay. And then we can you hold it on you hold on to it until the seventy five, and then. We give it away. Bro, that and then is... Now, now Eagle Nation will be lit. There you go. Make sure to hit that sub button because this ain't a fake giveaway. Just like his on Reddick, wandering the streets of Tokyo like the ghost of Tsushima isn't fake. I mean, not only is he not showing up to OTAs, but he's vacationing and posting videos while the New York Jets admitted they're not entirely sure what's going on. Yet the good news is the holdout isn't expected to bleed into training camp. And like I mentioned before, I totally understand Reddick's point. He doesn't want to get injured, and why not hold out and get the maximum value you can? But at the same time, it's not the best situation for the team morale. Fortunately, though, on the other hand, the Eagles seem to be in great spirits, as the Birds were out playing in a pickleball tournament in Seattle to support the Make the World Better Foundation, where Jake Elliott and Bo Allen ended up winning the advanced division. So congrats to the fellows for winning. And I just gotta say, I knew Jake Elliott was the best golfer on the team, but my goodness, I didn't realize he had the skills he does in pickleball. Come on, who says kickers aren't good athletes? Plus, we already know, but Jake the Make has got that killer instinct in him anyway. Honestly, the best part is just seeing the group get together and continue to build the chemistry, which they'll continue doing on Wednesday when Jason Kelsey hosts his fourth annual beach bash in Seattle City to benefit the Eagles Autism Foundation. Remember, last year they raised over 380000 so the goal is to top that this year. By the way, for the record, Kelsey will be there from 4 to 8 p.m., but understandably, you're going to want to arrive much earlier if you want to get anywhere near the action. Anyway, while it's encouraging to see and hear the morale of the squad being boosted, it's also just about as encouraging to hear Dallas Cowboys being in complete turmoil. Or at least a little bit out of sorts, after Ty Dunn reported the Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy is getting fed up with Jerry Jones undermining him. And, you know, not providing him with the talent or space or really any requirements to do his job. You know what? I'm going to hang on to the wooden gun. To give you back my real gun? No. We're going to give you this. It's a rape whistle. You blow that if you're in, in trouble and someone with an actual gun will come and help you out. I mean, to be fair, I would be upset too if my owner went out and said, oh yeah, we're all in and then just proceeded to let the market unfold and say, oh wait, there's the top paid receiver. Oh, there's another top paid quarterback yet. I need to actually sign these guys and not doing anything. Oh yeah, and then plus also not signing really anyone of noteworthy value. So yeah, it's understandable that there may be a little animosity between the two. Yet that's not the same case of Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni. And I can appreciate Joseph Santaliquito saying the two are perfectly fine citing that the two do have a working relationship as opposed to what others might claim. And ultimately, the relationship with new offensive coordinator Kellen Moore is really the most important aspect of the team's success, which again, is something Jalen's very open to and wanting to learn. I think, you know, this whole entire offseason, um, it's been about learning, um, learning, learning and taking in a new knowledge, new perspective um, and the minds that we have in the room. Um... And I think throughout the whole entire thing, that's kind of been the emphasis. You know, you get to a point where you kind of feel, um, hey, I'm going I'm to I'm feel comfortable with this. I'm going to like this. But um, that time comes where you can rep it, rep it, rep it later on. But, you know, right now, it's been a, um, been a lot of new inventory in 
um, majority of it, you know, probably 95% of it being new. Um, and so it's just been uh, been that process, and it's been a fun process because you get to see um, what works uh, for other people in the the number of coaches that I've had um, since I've been here, I've been able to take in a lot of new knowledge and new understanding. And so um, I think the goal coming in was to, you know, learn Kellen's offense and, and master it. Um, and I think that's been a process. And I think by the end of it, I want it to be mine um, and, and have it in, in my own way. Um, I think I think that's kind of a credit to, again, the, the the lack of continuity um, with that and it being a, a thing where I've kind of had to um, take all these new things and new voices and um, still go out there and be successful and efficient and so I think that's um, I think that's exactly what's going to happen again. Exactly, which is why Sandal Akito brought up the most important aspect of the entire relationship within this is Kellen Moore and Jalen Hurts getting along. Because just how Shane Steichen was able to get the most out of Jalen and maximize his skill set, it's going to be on Kellen Moore and Jalen's willingness to trust him. But quite honestly, that's not even a question. Since according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler, QB1's already buying in heavily and keeping an open line of communication. With Fowler saying the Eagles have spent a lot of time this offseason taking out the old offense of Sirianni's system, mixing it with Kellen Moore's principles, putting it all together in a pot of some gumbo, and seeing what works and what Jalen is comfortable with. And one of the best parts is that Hertz has done a good job being vocal and taking ownership of the plays that he likes and the plays he doesn't. Of course, the thought would be like, maybe, you know, let's get rid of everything else besides the tush push, which is why Jalen called the offense 95% new. But no, I'm not getting into the actual percentages of what the offense is. I mean, that's about as crazy as Nick Wright's take on Jalen Hurts ranking as an average NFL quarterback at best. I do think it's a legitimate conversation of, do we know Jalen Hurts is good? I think that... It like and by a good li- yes and but do, are we certain Jalen Hurts is a top fifteen quarterback in the league? I think and that's av- there's only thirty two. So are we cert- by good I mean better than the average league starter? Are we certain of that? And so here's why I think it's a fair question because you start with and I try to be fair. I try to be Wilds isn't here to remind everyone, but they do call me Mister Consistency. <laughs> there is an element of. The situation stuff that I I don't think hold against but use in my grading of Brock Purdy must apply here. Hold against. In, uh, in that, yeah, in that case. other than sure. San Francisco, is there a better situation for a quarterback? Look, I won't disagree that Jalen has one of the best setups in the league. However, to question if he's better than an average QB is ridiculous. Like, this is a dude who ranked number two in intermediate passes last season despite defenses knowing what was coming. And sure, I know the counter-argument is the weapons he has all around him, yet as Jalen's shown, his ability to deliver the ball in some really tight windows is without question better than average. Plus, you add in his ability to... He balled out. There you go, and heck, he was voted number three by NFL players last season. Although, yeah, I'm not an idiot to think that Jalen doesn't fall from the top 100 rankings a decent amount this year. But at the same time, NFL players aren't just lining up to put QBs crazy high unless they feel truly like he's a difference maker. I don't know, how are y'all feeling about all this and the doubts and everything else this season? I mean, I guess it could be possibly a silver lining by the fact that he's actually getting doubted. Because far too often, number one's proven he thrives on it. And again, Kellen Moore's offense is going to fully capitalize on Jalen's strengths which is the same way Dallas Goddard feels about his season this year, saying his best years are ahead of him. After all, take a look at guys like former tight end Greg Olson and even Kansas City's Travis Kelsey, and it's not much of a stretch to think Goddard could play his best football later into his career. Granted, he's 29 and hasn't been able to stay healthy, yet like we all know, when he is healthy, he can create some mismatches. Something 88 is confident he's going to see a lot more this year, since Kellen Moore is apparently making the offense make sense while changing up the reads for the QB and receivers. As Goddard said, I feel like it'll play in favor of the tight end, the quick game a little bit, getting back to the pivots, the sticks that I caught earlier in my career that went away a little bit, while also saying he's really excited for how he sees the tight ends being used and how he feels like that'll be a big part of the offense to help win games. Let's go. Who wouldn't love to see that? I mean, tight end was non-existent in some games last season. Yes, I know, Goddard got injured, but even before that, you can't deny he was missing in action at times. So it's promising that it'll be different this season. However, if DG were forced to miss any time, Andrew DiCecco put another tight end on the radar who was a spring standout in EJ Jenkins. With a 6'6", 260-pound, 25-year-old flashing his skills from previously playing wide receiver at South Carolina and Georgia Tech, before landing with the Jets as a rookie free agent last season. And for those curious, Jenkins was described at OTAs as someone who possesses nimble route running and a unique ability to tack the football. Plus, at that size, with the ability to run a 4.6240, it's no wonder he built a quick rapport with Kenny Pickett and Tanner McKee during minicamp. 
And Jenkins also reportedly worked out with Pickett down in Florida to throw a couple routes ahead of OTAs. Although, as DeCheco pointed out, it's not his receiving acumen that the second-year player wanted to convey to the coaches, as he's continued to hone his craft in the blocking game while adding more weight and muscle. Now, while that is a step in the right direction, there's obviously a ton of guys vying for a roster spot. Let's not forget about C.J. Uzama, Albert O., Grant Calcaterra, who Sirianni's mentioned a couple different times, and E.J. Jenkins. So, understandably, it may be a tough uphill battle, but still, just to have the depth there is really promising. Granted, like I mentioned a second ago, it's tough for everyone to get enough targets. Because as PFF shared, the Eagles have one of the best receiving cores in the game. Not that you really even need to be told that. Because it's something that we all know. However, Ruben Frake seems to believe it could get even scarier, sharing why Devontae Smith has a monster year ahead for him. For example, Smitty had the 10th highest yards per target last season, and he also caught 72.3% of his targets which for those counting is a record by an Eagles wide receiver. Also for additional context, A.J. Brown finished with a 67.1% catch percentage. However, the biggest element that Rube argues is the change in Kellen Moore's offense and the willingness to put the Slim Reaper in different spots to fully utilize his game. Which is why, honestly, I've talked about this a number of times, but I think A.J. and Smitty can easily top their marks from last season, and there's no question in my mind that Jalen Hurts will have over 4,000 yards passing. Yet the fair question that keeps coming up is what happens if they get injured? Because we saw it not looking so great last season when that happened. So the Philly Voices' Jimmy Kimsky took a look at that possibility and potential solutions via free agency. Let's start with the first option Jimmy brought up in Michael Thomas. I mean, Thomas used to be a phenomenal receiver, but since 2019, he's only played in 20 games while missing 47. Plus, perhaps the more concerning reason to pass is because just last year, he publicly accused his quarterback of getting him hurt with a bad ball, criticized his quarterback for making wrong reads, got into multiple Twitter fights with Saints reporters, and was arrested for allegedly throwing a brick at a construction worker's truck because he didn't like where it was parked. You see what happens? You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens? Yeah, I think I'm good. Of course, the other wideout to mention is Hunter Renfro, and he's one that doesn't completely make sense to not sign somewhere by this point. Yet with his production slowing and like Kimsky reminded, small shifty slots haven't been typically the Howie Roseman jam, so probably not likely to be a realistic option. Also, really quickly, I know some people have asked what about Julio Jones? And sure, he did have 11 catches for 74 yards and three touchdowns last season, but looking at how he played along with the potential availability or lack of availability, it's hard to envision a future where you sign him back. Now, if you want to grab a former Titan, what about former fifth overall pick Corey Davis, who played four seasons in Tennessee before another two with the Jets and then deciding to step away from football? However, he did just apply for reinstatement, so would you want to risk bringing him in for at least seeing what he's got left? Personally, this is another one of those where I'm okay with it because, heck, you're going to have tons of guys get cut anyway, and it could end up being not much of anything. However, it's no secret that Davis is an unbelievable run blocker. So, given what we've seen previously in a guy like Zach Paschal and now having Saquon Barkley, could he potentially offer just enough in the passing game while providing a physical presence every once in a while to help block? I mean, we're not signing someone to put up 500 yards at this point or really even anything close to that, but how would you guys feel about signing Corey Davis? Not the worst last name, but let me know in the comments. All right, got another player interview coming up soon, so stay tuned for that, as well as hit that like button, make sure to sub. As soon as we get to 75,000, we're going to be giving away that white Eagles helmet signed by Isaiah Rogers. Until next time, this has been the Philly Special.